So in aqueous chemistry, uh, this problem is almost always solved in sort of a differential manner by writing equilibrium constants between the phases and then calculating equilibrium that way. Um, we're doing it quite differently. We're doing it by direct minimization of the, uh, all the components in the system and, um, and solving it by imposing the mass balance constraints. And the way, the way Nelson, the equilibrate module, actually does this, um, the, the, the straightforward method would be to go into one of the Python libraries like SciPy and just grab one of the nonlinear minimization routines, right? And just say, I'm going to use that. And, and it'll work, but it, it's slow. So what, um, what I have done in, in I think the original Bell's package and in rebuilding it in uh, the equilibrate package is I have um, actually done all the minimization steps in Python, uh, constructing the matrices and so on and so forth, but then I'm using NumPy libraries, which are in C, to actually do the heavy lifting. And that takes advantage of the fact that you can construct these very, very uh, elaborate pieces of code in a compact fashion in Python, but then all of the actual phase properties and the actual uh, numerical matrix inversions and singular value decompositions and orthogonal projections and all the crap that has to go on to actually do this is done in C or Fortran. It doesn't really, but it's done in the NumPy level, and uh, it's fast. So what the algorithm does, if you're trying to find the minimum of, let's say, this purple function here, you're trying to get down to there, what this algorithm does is it starts off with a really good initial guess. Um, and then at that initial guess, it, it finds the slope of the actual curve. And then from that slope, constructs a quadratic approximation. And you can always do that. And then finding the minimum of a quadratic is really easy, even in multiple dimensions. It's a single matrix inversion. As long as the matrix is stable, that's fine. So you can easily find that green point there. And then what the what this equilibrium module does, whether it be open or closed systems, it doesn't really matter, is it looks along that direction, but it looks in a way so that it never ever violates any of the bulk composition constraints. I mean, you, you can't just look random, right? Because you can't make mass if it's constrained and so on. So you, you project the search direction into the null space, what's called the null space, or the direction where you have freedom to actually move. And you look along that direction past the minimum of the parabola, and you look and look and look until you find the lowest point on the actual free energy surface. Now in this case, it's where that arrow would intersect the purple surface, which this is not always the case, but in this case is awfully close to the true minimum. And then the, the algorithm repeats. It repeats by saying, okay, now I'm going to form the quadratic approximation at the projection point. And then it finds it. And the quadratic approximation, in this particular case, the quadratic approximation here would be virtually the original free energy curve, right? so that it would go directly, almost directly to the minimum. But it will keep doing this until the difference between the quadratic minimum and the actual minimum is uh, smaller than um, about 10 to the minus 7 or 10 to the minus 8 relative, which you can control in the L.